it's quite helpful to think of South Africa as, in a sense, a um, middle income, perhaps even sort of lower on the rungs of a first world country in the centre, surrounded by conditions of underdevelopment. And that's, that's the realm in which um, the majority of South Africans live. Often uh, what, you, what you view as a highly mechanised, large corporate South Africa um, sits next to a far more dominant sort of uh, uh, hive of informal sector activity, the unemployed and the rural poor, and that's the dominant landscape. In South Africa, poverty takes on a, a slightly different form um, because in, in the South African context, poverty coexists with, with plenty. Um, so it's a, a society that if you lobbed off the top 10% and then you took the average, I think you'd get a far more representative picture of what the society looks like. Poverty is also peculiarly racialized. So whilst there are lots of, um, whilst there's an expanding uh, black middle class, um, poor people are still statistically overwhelmingly African. So in the context of income inequality, what you'll find is that uh, for the data we have post-94, income inequality has increased um, over the period since 1994, making us one of the most unequal societies in the world. In terms of assets though, if one thinks of assets as represented by the delivery of public assets such as housing, electricity, water, even sanitation. If one does the same, uh, uses the same analytical tool which is to derive Gini coefficients for assets, public assets in particular, that Gini coefficient or that asset inequality has actually gone down. South Africa manages to combine a historical legacy of underdevelopment, which is racialized, which is our colonial and apartheid past, but it, it combines this with a path of growth. Um, which endures into the present, which perpetuates poverty. In these kinds of ways, poverty in South Africa is fairly distinctive. So you sit with this hypothesis which more simply goes as follows that rural households are spending more of their disposable, more of their total income on food and clothing um, than uh, urban households are and principally because urban households are faced with higher cost pressures than rural households are. We thought we'd question that and ask whether urban households may actually be worse off, if you like, in terms of disposable expenditure on food and clothing, just because they're forced to spend a larger proportion of their budgets on these rising costs, such as electricity, water, and so on, uh, and, and rental because of a housing crunch. And that then may mean that uh, urban households are actually worse off in terms of disposable income, money av available for food and clothing relative to rural households. The, the, the key result from the analysis of the data is that urban households are spending 40% of their total income or total expenditure on, um, on food and clothing type uh, commodities. But rural households on the other hand are spending 75% of the total expenditure or total income on food and clothing type commodity. So if you think of private goods sitting on the vertical axis and the poorest to the richest on the horizontal axis, you could argue that the poor have more available to spend on these private goods. So as a share, for those that are poorest, the graph would actually be higher than for those who are richer. And in some strange conception, right, that you have this result which may suggest that the poor, given these very high price increases for public goods and services that are pressuring urban households, the poor actually are looking quite good at the top of this graph in terms of uh, being able to spend more on private goods, on food and clothing, because they don't face these same cost pressures that rural households, uh, that urban households do. So clearly, the hypothesis has actually proven true that rural households are committing a large, are able to commit a larger proportion of their expenditure to um, food and clothing and other sort of private, good, uh, pri private goods and services compared to urban households.